Why don't I try that? Okay. You know, it would help if there was a little more light in this room. <laughs> it's, uh, I guess people don't have to take notes on paper. But they, can you keep the paper? If you have a piece of paper, can you see it? You can. But, but it's just not shining on your face, that's all. Well, I can imagine them um, a bunch of happy faces. That's accurate. Um, anyway, it changes all the time. Um, well, one thing I wanted to do today was just to draw to your attention um, some uh, articles uh, written some time ago about um, Israel Halpern and um, referring to um, Von Neumann. Um, the, the, um, um, there was a, an obituary of Halpern in the um, Toronto Star, which I have a copy of. You have to otherwise you have to subscribe to uh, look at it, I think. And uh, there's also one in the Globe and Mail, too. So, but you can see it's very insurance. So, there, there was a 23 years ago in, in the year 2000, there was a um, an issue of the of an outstanding newspaper in Financial Times of London, which is called the Financial Times. And uh, I've, I've, I've read you an article, at least one article from it. Um, so uh, lots of publications um, every year have, um, this is old fashioned language, but every, every year they have a man of the year. Maybe it's called something different now. Uh, different ideas of what the word man refers to. I mean, uh, well, the, the uh, his, his historical television series, uh, the as, the ascent the ascent of man. I don't think that um, I don't think it would be the same if you if you, if you if it was the ascent of person. Well, <clears throat> but uh, every year there's a particular person uh, picked out often, and uh, maybe um, maybe once every hundred years there's a particular effort goes into picking out the person. Well, the, um, in the year 2000, the Financial Times uh, uh, took it on themselves to pick out um, the man of the millennium. Okay, well, that was um, uh, someone that uh, Israel Halpern um, uh, spent a lot of time studying for the person and work. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I, and I also have an interview, interview with uh, Israel Halpern. It's part of something called Princeton Mathematics Community in the 1930s. You can, uh, you can look it up, just type that in uh, on the computer and come up. It's, it's uh, Albert Tucker, who's a, from here. And he, um, uh, he was a professor at Princeton, and he um, interviewed a um, large number, extensive interviews with a large number of, of um, people associated with Princeton, the Princeton Mathematics Department in the 1930s. Um, so this, this is an interview of Israel Halpern at Princeton. University on the 25th of May, 1984. Interviewers Albert Tucker. Um, so, well, it, it's uh, it would take um, a whole week to, uh, I'd, I'd use up a whole week reading it to you, but 
but uh, it, would, it would be time well spent, I believe. Because uh, it would get you to do, uh, I, think it would, I think you might find it inspiring. Um, okay, so um, let me just read the first couple of paragraphs. The first couple of paragraphs. Uh, Tucker, would you, would you tell me how it was that you came to Princeton as a graduate student? Okay. Well, I came in 1933. Prior to that, I had done a year's graduate work at the University of Toronto on a master's degree. Before the end of that year, I applied to a number of institutions in the United States, graduate schools of higher education, for an opportunity to go there to do the PhD work. I was accepted in several places, including Princeton, so it was just a case of choosing which I preferred. Since one of Toronto's graduates, Albert Tucker, had gone to Princeton. That was a place that I knew something about. Um, Tucker. There was a second one. Oh, and that's true, but Albert Tucker had not only been there, but he by this time had taken his PhD and gone on to higher things. The reputation of the Princeton staff had become rather solid at Toronto. Yes, there was a second one, Malcolm Robertson, who was in the course of doing his PhD. That was, uh, this, by the way, there's a math department has an award, uh, has an award uh, named after Malcolm Robertson. Um, that was enough for me. It was also so that another student with whom I was in close touch with Toronto and her close friends had an offer to go to Princeton to graduate work. That was Don Brewer. Yes, together we decided we would go to Princeton. Do you remember your first days at Princeton? Oh, yes, of course. We were very poor. We were all very poor in those days. Was there any difference now? Uh, and we came by bus. We arrived at the bus station at the edge of Princeton, as it was then. So I phoned Al Tucker and said, we're here, what should we do? He said, stay right there, I'll come. So he came and took us to a place where we could have a room. He had been there, a place called Brown Hall, residence, theological cemetery. Of course, by then, Tucker, of course, by then, Fine Hall was in use. Fine Hall opened for business in the fall of 1931, as we call it. It was very interesting that to those who had been there, this was a rather new building. To someone like myself who had just arrived, it might as well have been there a hundred years. From whom did you take courses in your first year? Do you remember? Oh, I remember very well. I got the impression I wasn't taking courses. I hope nobody here gets that impression. <laughs> but those of us who were in our first year of graduate work were apparently expected to take Luther P. Eisenhardt's tensor calculus course. When I started that course, it was all very dull because I had been through all of this with Singh, John L. Singh in Toronto. <coughs> yes. Oh, okay. Well, uh, the um, obituary is resting, uh, resting a beautiful mind and crusading spirit. Uh, Award winning mathematician and rights champion never got tired of seeking, seeking truth by Catherine Dunphy. Thank you very much. Israel Hoffman had a beautiful mind, one of the finest of his generation, that flourished in the field of pure mathematics, the only discipline in the world in which something is either right or it is not. There is nothing approximate about mathematics that Hoffman's son, Steve. Also a mathematician. It's correct, and it is forever. Well, yeah, that's why you have to keep checking. Huh? <laughs> um, it is also a challenge because it is harder to do. Well, some things are impossible. If that's what good will prove. Uh, Steve Halpern is dean of the College of Science at the University of Maryland. His brother Bill is the John Evans Professor of Physics at Northwestern University. Their sisters, Mary and Connie, are a medical doctor and head of the Terry Fox Research Lab in Vancouver, respectively. Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back to it. Okay. 
One of the recent things is uh, one of the recent things to discuss is um, how to start moment to a problem. That's this um, as a interesting relationship to. Um, like anything you have to keep revisiting it uh, if you didn't try to uh, uh, usually possible to uh, number crunch everything all at once so, uh, briefly uh, one of the main uh, questions you have um, as an ordered ring. And what we're thinking of is the um, uh, important case, thinking of is the uh, Pascal triangle um, ordered ring. So if you are an ordered group, you put um, copy of Z, if you can bring your point, and then the, 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 um, the edges you interpret as. Um, that's modifying by one. That was said, that was said, that was the map, that it said plus that. So then you have that plus X was into that plus Z plus Z. Because group, and it's an order group, because Z is an order group. These uh, maps are positive maps, they're also injective. Every stage the map is injective from Z to the end to Z to the end plus one. But you can think of it as an increasing sequence for the group. The group's getting larger and the uh, positive tones, the sense of positive elements, getting larger and larger. And uh, you investigate it as I hope everyone has looked at it, um, has looked at it both as a group and as an order group. As a group, it's um, if you um, just look at the um, Anyway, you're summing from the first um, uh, points so <coughs> need to roll. And those are independent and uh, generate the whole uh, whole group. So it's um it's a, and it's an infinite direct sum of copies of Z as a group. Not as an order group. The order the order relation is more interesting. The order relation is some um, so by the way. Any, if you take um, direct, the direct sum of copies of Z, you can think of that as the group of polynomials with integer coefficients. And that as a group, that's a kind of trivial state. But uh, once you do that, it, uh, it, it um, allows you to multiply it. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so the um, this is the form of your one, and this is the form of your x, and your squared, and so on. And here you get one minus x because um, um, <clears throat> that's a simplification of the diagram in terms of that's the group. So, that and this is the that uh, Z, then um, one goes to one comma one. That's not. And it's um, uh, whatever this is, whatever this is, the sum is equal to one. So if, if this one is X, sort of by, uh, by, by definition, then this one is one minus X. Then the um, the ring structure is, is uh, imposed. You will recognize the ring structure once you assign the uh, uh, polynomials to every, um, every point. 
Yeah, it's a, a commutative ring product. product doesn't depend on the order. Just ordinary multiplication of polynomials. Okay. And um, uh, and it's, they're positive in the sense of uh, being you know, elements of one over which uh, one by the second. And the product of two products of two such is the other positive. Ring. And you have a well, the ring has a unit. This the polynomial uh, one is, is, is a unit, or one times anything to any piece. And the further, furthermore, it's an order unit. If you have any um, any integer is less than or equal to uh, some uh, positive uh, multiple of uh, one, and, um, and and it's the same the same here. Uh, if you look at them. When you look at the element one comma one, and every element here is less than or equal to some uh, some uh, multiple of that. For instance, x is less x is positive and it's less than or equal to one. That's one minus x is positive, and x plus one minus x is equal to one. Okay, but um, <coughs> it's an ordered ring. And the unit is an ordered unit. Um, Well, okay. Uh, if you have a state, this is a functional. R goes to uh, a real number. Uh, or positive. Take positive elements and positive elements. Additive. Takes the and if it takes the second one is equal to one, uh, then it's a state. All the state. Oh, it, it's related to uh, the word state in um, physical. Yeah, that's already a subject for an essay. Maybe everyone has written all their essays on me. But you can always write more. Right? Yeah. Um, you don't have to be. Um, you don't have to be uh, theses. Okay, so um, <clears throat> and if, whenever you have this, if you have a function set, by the way, well, if you average two things, the uh, convex combination in such things is still positive, but positive one still add still. One on the unit. The convex set, <coughs> and it's a compact convex set in the natural power. But the power of power is one of my convergence. Or each group element has a value of the first. Each six group elements have a net of functional symbols. With compact compact uh, space, Compact convex set in a setting where you have so every um, if you look at the extreme points. Extreme points are important because in a compact convex set, every element is an average of extreme points. And um, in finite dimensional case, which is finitely many, in this particular case, it's what's called a simplex, but just finitely many green points in finite dimensional case. And, and um, every point in the simplex is a unique linear combination of the green uh, points, unique convex combination of the green points, unique average. And um, in the infinite dimensional case, it's still true. It not only is um, a measure on the three points, which is every um, probability measure, such that every point in the set is an average of three points, respect to that uh, measure, probability measure. So that's that's unique, and that, that's how you that's how you prove, and that's one way of, of proving the uh, Hausdorff 
I saw giving a solution to the house door a moment ago. Which, um, okay. The first thing that the house door moment uh, problem gives you or the solution to it, you're given the moments. Moments are just numbers. If you want to find a measure, then you have to be, um, the, uh, you know, like the you put on it, just the, uh, uh, the, um, you've given the intervals of the uh, people or numbers. Uh, and, uh, um, you're given the, uh, uh, All the moments, the universe is the power of space. <coughs> over the uh, space that the, um, over the over the pocket was. Yeah. And here's one the uh, interval zero one. So you look at all the moments. So on. And the uh, question is um, when, when the um, is a sequence of numbers. These sequence of intervals of a, a measure which are monomials powers of that. Well, the the addition uh, is that the the, um, the numbers themselves be positive, but also that they be um, be um, decreasing, and also the um, this, the second order derivative. Derivative to be decreasing. It's like uh, Arnold's um, um, reference to the uh, history of the late last, the uh, final history of the Soviet Union. Every, everyone knew it was uh, on the way out because all the higher order derivatives were negative. Okay, so that's what that's what the condition is for a measure. That's the solution for what's called one problem. You can fill in all the numbers in a natural way, and they should all be positive. Okay. That, says, that, that says all this you're subtracting them, this plus this equals that. This is, this is smaller than that, so they're getting smaller. All the higher order group, the green group is getting sort of decreasing. That's the um, condition that um, tells to discover that a sequence of positive numbers be uh, the moments of the all right, but this is then this is exactly a positive linear functional on the, on the quarter group. Okay. So the um, in other words, the, the numerical uh, pattern that uh, is the condition for a minute, according to Hausdorff, is the condition for the numbers to arise in form. It's it's uh, precisely the um, purely uh, algebraic, uh, straightforward combinatorial point of view. It's exactly the condition if you have a state on the ordered group. Then the group is that X, which is what you call the Pascal order. But Renault, Renault is the one that does it. This PhD thesis. Uh, detailed analysis of Pascal's triangle from, from the value value on point of view, calculating the order group in terms of evaluating the polynomials on the line, on the interval. Okay? If a polynomial, it can be thought of as a function on the interval. And all these functions, all these monomials, which are considered going to be positive in the order group, they're clearly positive on, clearly positive on the open interval. And, and he will prove the converse. If you have a polynomial which is an integer coefficient, which is strictly positive on the interior interval zero one, it must be a finite sum of um, monomials in x one minus x. And the proof uses some um, um, order ring. Okay? The extreme states are multiplicative, okay? And and the and the theory of extreme states. The, um, so extreme states are more effective, and of course they're just evaluating the points of the interval. But we don't know that we don't get we don't know evaluating an arbitrary point of the interval. 
gives you an extreme state, but we don't matter. We, we don't, it doesn't matter, we don't mind. Because um, if you have, um, um, because you get to measure anyway. So for any um, compact convex set, there's a measure on the extreme points, which uh, you average them and you get the, the um, you get the state. And whether the extreme points are the whole integral of zero to one or just some subset, no, it doesn't matter. Of course, at the end, when you're finally finished, you can prove that in this case, that the uh, every point in the interval is zero minus the extreme point. But that's it's irrelevant. That's a sort of a thrill. The point, the important thing is that the extreme points are multiplicative. And um, and that's um, something I wanted to pick up a couple of weeks in. Maybe maybe um, um, maybe you might want to think about it a little more. But, um, yeah. Be good as a be good as, a, as an exercise. Break up what we create one of the the exercises that um, states is some in the order of being This implies that um, F is preserves the product F is long. Um, <clears> the <throat> converse is also true in, in this case because when you're very you absolutely finished, then you're talking about measures on the interval zero one. It's easy to prove if you have an extreme measure, then it must be um, uh, if you have a or if you have a point, if you evaluate at a point, that's a measure, it's called it's called a direct delta function. Um, in the, you could work that into a, into what's called the theory of distribution. So many people have, have studied the theory of distribution. It's an important uh, part of that line. Um, well, one of Israel Halperin's uh, publications was a, um, a, an elegant short introduction to the theory of distribution. Oh, okay. So if you have a, if you have a, a point, if the evaluation at a point is an average of, of two measures which are not concentrated at the point, well, you can, um, um, I think you can uh, uh, find a find a continuous function which is um, um, working with continuous functions. It's hard to work with polynomials. But if, you can, if you're allowed to work with continuous functions then, or measurable functions, then, then you can easily show that, that the, the, um, the evaluation of the point can't be an average of, of, of two measures if you're not concentrated at the point. That's, that's a good exercise. So, but, uh, uh, what I would like to like people to look at is a question for a general order of ring, whether uh, you know, is true. That's true that the uh, state is more frequent than some extreme point of the itself. Okay, so um, what is the um, I invite people to do uh, just to, to review look at proof that um, multiplicativity of <clears throat> okay, well, that, that's some. Um, um, let's, let's think about that. It's, it's, it's silly to say it's good to have things to think about because I don't, I don't think um, you can need my suggestions, but it's something to think about. <coughs> so we, we're looking at the 
we started to look at the question of what predisting to taking the um, tension of the Spanish algebra, each algebra, but you have to treat the Spanish algebra. Well, for two reasons, anyway. So, look at the suspension, and you start with the of the algebra. So, you get um, A is a static algebra of the unit. And then the one that goes over the A1 but what's the suspension going to function on the line? Vanish plus or minus infinity. And uh, if you put me K1 of any um, uh, batting algebra, batting algebra K1, as you look at the, uh, um, also if B is a batting algebra, and K1 of B is by definition the complex batting algebra, it's K1 of B uh, tilde, you join the unit, okay? And, uh, And then if it's the unital valid algebra, it, um, yeah, it can, you can talk about the variable elements. And it, and, uh, topological elements and have um, topology on the invertible elements, so we have connected components. And the connected components form a group of the, the set of invertible elements is a group. And if you look at the um, connected component of the um, unit, and that is some um, group, and it's a normal subgroup. So you take a look at the pass to the quotient, and you get a group, and that's the K1 group. Well, that's actually equal to matrices too. So you look at what this invertible element in the algebra. By two matrices, or by four, three by three, and so on. Look at the connected component. You say that two things are equivalent. They are um, connected to the unit, it's connected in some uh, larger matrix L. <clears throat> That's um, uh, by the way, this is um. There's a top lot of groups. The variable elements are an open subset of the bad of the panic element. In any case, they're a subset, so that they have a norm topology. And that's true, that's top lot of group. And if you divide out by the connected component, there's an open subgroup. Power series groups. Important not, we're not talking about arbitrary topological elements, we're talking about bad The connected component of the um, unit is open and subset of the whole bad algorithm because the invertible, it's an open subset of the invertible elements, they turn from an open subset. You can see it just looking at the complex numbers. So invertible elements. Non zero ones, that's an open subset. And that, that, that is connected one, so it's not a very good example. Okay. Matrices over the uh, complex numbers and the vertical elements are connected. That's a good exercise. Um, over the real numbers, it's not even true. If you take the group, if you take the, the real bad algebra of real numbers. And uh, what are the invertible elements? Well, again, it's the non-zero ones, right? But, uh, 
you can have, you can have um, uh, if we sort of borrow this copy of the real numbers, then you have know, so we can be a tiny suspension. We don't really keep track of what, where the zero is because we want to be a group. And we keep track of where the zero is. And then um, the zero is not in vertical, but everything else is, right? It, but, then, but then it's if you take away the um, that's one way of defining dimension. If it's dimension, take away a point, the, uh, the um, line is no longer connected. Whereas in the plane, take away a point, still connect. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> that means the K1 of the um, real numbers. Is the group of two elements because the connected components are percentage, I guess, in that index two plus or minus one. <clears throat> so, um, um, so, we're talking about the complex. Um, So if it's the, um, it's the, it is a real kind of God for you join a unit. You have to be careful. You have to, uh, you have to throw away the unit. Okay, you have to um, if you do the same thing as you do for defining K zero in the complex case. You you join a unit and map the um, the natural map to the complex number of times the unit, and then look at that's a map between two unit algebras. K zero functor and take this an elementary way of giving the map. You take the kernel of that map, which um, that's the K zero of the non unit world. Real numbers, and I can't remember the real numbers, as we might want to uh, get rid of what there is to the real numbers. Anyone remember what the period is? Got to be, I'll give you a hint. It's got to be a multiple of two because it's two in the complex case. And any complex Banach algebra is a real Banach algebra. Okay. So if, if, um, if, 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 uh, complex, if, 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 if it's a complex Banach algebra, taking the suspension just uh, flips the K0 and K1, well then, um, uh, the, um, if the real um, Banach algebra, uh, the period of that, which is larger, it, it's not a multiple of two, then the, then um, the two things together would not they, they interfere. Right? You'd get um, eventually you get everything had to be the same. <coughs> you have a one way of expressing it is if you have a um, you have a look at the natural numbers as a semi group and and um, <clears throat> and you have two if the semi group contains two, uh, two two natural numbers that are uh, um, are relatively prime and then um, the semi group doesn't have to be all natural semi-group semi generated by two relatively prime numbers um, doesn't have to be everything, but it has to be, if you go far enough, it has to be everything. Okay. There's an extra thing. So if you take two and three, for instance, those are relatively prime, right? Okay, so what's the semi-group they uh, generate? With multiples of two, also multiples of three. But you, no one gets the number one. Okay, so it's, uh, eventually, eventually, uh, you have to work a bit to prove every every number beyond uh, two for two or more is a, is a multiple of two plus a multiple of three. Right? I guess you have to maybe there's a little arithmetic as well. Well, it's a, it's a general fact. You have two relatively prime numbers, and it's true, but uh, it's even a little more arithmetic involved. And that's number theory. Then, then. you're talking about two arbitrary relatively prime. 
actual numbers and then some sort of elementary embryonic number theory that um, they generate um, um, well, the group they generate is everything, all the integers. But the semi group they generate is um, almost all integers, all except finitely many. All, all except finitely many possible. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we're, we're um, A0A, A1, S6. Go ahead, in picture right here. Out to the mass, out to the elements, and then get the item folder. And that's supposed to just uh, go in. How many people? Um, oh, so I, but I didn't finish uh, reviewing what the uh, S. Uh, what the S of A tilde was. S of A is the thing that vanishes in the tilde of the employee unit. And since the algebra has a unit, it's some functions in values in A which converge to the same number at um, plus and minus you know, okay, the same complex one, same complex one. And so the science that very well. What uh, is it, uh, Abigail? What, what's an invertible? Uh, what, what's the right invertible? Uh, what's a reasonable invertible? Uh, what's invertible in that's the uh, you know. oh. Right? I, I, yeah. Okay, but if, if P is the if P is zero, then maybe you Tap it into um, one, okay. And if p is equal to one, maybe you map it into uh, what you map it into. Suppose p is the unit of a, and what would be the invertible? What would be the um? So over here, if p is zero, then you take the function constant. And by the way, it's this is I'm stretching things out on the line. It's maybe better to sometimes to think of, of the line as the circle as one the point one removed. Okay. And so and then um, then there's a natural well on the line you can look at the function at x okay. or function t function t on the line t and t equals t and then um, on on the circle okay, you can look at the function z. So I I, I always learned that, that uh, you shouldn't um, confuse the, the notation for the function with the notation for the variable, right? So I always try to get it right. <laughs> Completely clear. Because that is that equals that. All right. You know, that's one thing people in physics are way ahead of people in math. Okay. Uh, they, they have no trouble whatsoever. Uh, using the same notation. <laughs> for, for, uh, no, but seriously. Uh, if you try. So you have many a function with many variables, and then you have vector value functions. They, 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 they just think the, the notation looks very similar. You can't tell from looking at the notation whether it's a dependent variable or an independent variable. Okay. But, so then for me, for me, when I was taking thermodynamics, basically that's that thermodynamics is the chain rule. Early the elementary thermodynamics is basically just a chain rule, okay? but it's applied in this set setting. So I, I was completely out of my depth. I knew the chain rule. But once I wrote an essay, I put everything into mathematical notation, and the, the physics professor said, What's this? Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it wasn't. The, it wasn't, an, it wasn't an essay that got marked. It was just a, my own uh, sort of uh, struggle. Well, maybe, maybe he wasn't uh, he wasn't rough. He, he wasn't he wasn't angry. He was surprised that I thought it necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but um, <clears throat> so. 
Look at both pictures. And um, so, Abigail, does that help as an kind of hint? Sorry? And by the way, I suppose I don't need the circle. I could just say, but look at the map is into the function t. t is a t, t is a um, oh no, t itself is not uh, doesn't converge at infinity, right? When you take e to the i t, then that would do it, right? Because at plus or minus infinity, you get um, uh, is that right? No, actually, that's not so good. So, um, it would, maybe the line is not so good, okay? But if you, because if, 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 this function is not the reparameterization, the parameterization of R as the circle minus point. It, uh, you have to um, stretch a bit to, um, Touch your imagination, not the line, to to um, take the um, take the variables correspond. So I, I think it's better to start with the circle. So just if you're not talking about quantitative things, just qualitative. You can say that um, the suspension is things between the joint is functions on the line which converge to the scalar, the same scalar plus minus. Mm -hmm. Well, the, on the circle is the same thing. Functions a value functions. Which extend to a, 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 a continuous function in the whole circle, which at the point one is just the multiple of one, multiple of one, or when you pass the base, multiple of the matrix, scalar interest, complex entry. Okay, but this is that, is that um, um, Charlie, does that help? Yeah. Well, no, but I mean, uh, I'm waiting to get a, to say what, to, to, to have somebody to tell me what to write on the board. For, 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 um, that it helps, but maybe not very much. Okay, yeah, uh, I, I have a problem. Yes, I have okay. uh, to minus Okay, well, you're doing the general case. I was just wondering what you would map the you know, unit into. You start with one in a, you know, that's true. Uh, let's do, um, I think it's good to get into the habit of starting with simple cases. Yeah? Uh, I'm, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure you can tell me what the general case is, but I might not be able to check it right away. I might have to do a little calculation myself, whereas I, I know exactly what to do to just take the unit. So what would you do? Sorry? I'm second guessing. Oh, yeah, you're, you're now you're doing a lightning calculation. <laughs> okay. Charlie, do you want to take another look? What, do we, what does the unit so the unit of A comes into what? Some uh, some uh, function which shows the A value function. But uh, at the moment, A like is a complex number, right? So so it uh, we certainly can't involve too many complicated functions. This function must be this complex value. Function on the line, or on the circle, function on the circle, which uh, has complex values everywhere. And, and um, well, then, is there any, um, um, are those some, um, they won't all be, um, it makes a difference. They're not all connected. They're not all, they're not all going to be connected to the function. None of them is going to be, if it's, it's not constant equal to one, then it's unlikely to be connected to the function constant equal to one. They're unlikely to be one. What about this then? I went to the trouble of, of, of uh, working out a systematic notation. <laughs> so why don't we try that? Uh, I, I'm not saying I did it. I'm not saying I did it on purpose. Okay, why don't we try? So we, since we, if you've got something, maybe you should use it. But why don't we try this? Out? Okay. Is an element of, of S of A. Sure. 
interpreted as questions by the ESR? Well, Abigail, do you want to generalize P equals zero? P equals zero. Zero goes to one. So what about the more general P? Yeah, and that's invertible, right? And if we just took Z times P, that wouldn't be quite invertible, it would be invertible inside P. If you look to P, A, P, then that would be invertible there. Okay. But then if you want it to be invertible in A, the um, cheapest way to do it is to add more to the unit, one minus P. So that's in one minus p times a times one minus p. Right? So this you can these are two with all the normal subordinates in the sum of the units. The mean of this p the unit is one minus p. You have something invertible here, something invertible here. If you add them, you get something invertible in a. Okay, so this is a part of the world, of course, you can just break down the end. Okay. <clears throat> okay, well, that's, that's step one. That's step one. Okay. And then um, step two, it's supposed to be, uh, it's, it's almost, um, uh, it's, it's almost supposed to be an oversimplification. But, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I, I imagine myself being a you kind know, of a troublemaker, and and, um, and I I remember keep remembering what the late Professor Harris said, my AF uh, thematic uh, repetition of the um, zigzag, okay, which I was able to justify completely as this very uh, precise monthly money, okay. Of course. If you haven't studied Greek, you know, you don't pronounce the M in the uh, in, uh, name of it. Okay. I, uh, of course, make, who knows how, how it was pronounced in, in ancient Greece. I, I get, I also have my, I also learned how to pronounce ancient Latin too. Okay, so what do we preach about? First step, and this is the second step, and then this is the third step. And, that's, uh, and so the first step is algebraic at the level of the uh, elements of the algebra. The second step is after you've done some homework, and check this uh, goes from the map to the zero. Yeah. Uh, the equivalence of the equivalence of the equivalence of the Think of this as projections, if you like, to begin with. These are the star and the point. And um, this is the third very one of many codes. And so you get the semi group map, the third addition. And um, you get a semi group map, and passing to the enveloping group, you get a group map, K, K0A into one, well, into K1 of, of, of the um, one of the that's step two. Step three is the That's where you um, start to find that you um, it needs to be a matic Okay, let's come back to that. Uh, 